Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse for Joe, well, of course it does. Joe Biden, the supposed leader of the Democrat Party, the Democrat top dog, has officially become a pariah in his own party. He's the president of the United States, but nobody wants to go close to the man. And that's exactly it, folks. He's become so deeply unpopular. He's become such an anchor, such a drag on everything every Democrat, that now nobody wants to be associated or seen with sleepy failure Joe and the embarrassing for Biden media moments continue to pile up. This time with a longtime Virginia Democrat, a New York Times columnist and just voters telling the guy to take a hike as the anti Joe Biden sentiment continues to grow, not on the Republican side, but in his own party. Let's continue to cover this phenomenon. Let's listen to what some voters have to say. And then let's go into some data analysis here because we're at a little bit of a weird point when it comes to polling data. I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. I've got some stuff to get into, folks, so let's roll the tape. All right, friends, so another hugely embarrassing moment for Joe Biden. Virginia Democrat goes on Fox News and rejects campaign help from Biden, then boasts that she, quote, outperformed him. Take a look at this. Do you think that you'll have President Biden come and campaign with you in that district? I, I intend to do the campaigning myself. Uh, in 2020, ran for re-election and certainly right. outperformed the president on the ballot by telling people what I had done and what I was going to continue to do. Now, the difference is real stark. Joe Biden, supposedly the most popular president in American history, is, as I stated, an outcast, a pariah. And Democrats, especially Democrats in swing states or toss-up districts, don't want to go close to this guy. They don't want to be spotted in the same damn city as him. But Donald Trump, who was supposedly this evil, terrible villain that everyone hated is essentially the kingmaker of the Republican Party. Without Donald Trump's seal of approval, without his endorsement, you're pretty much screwed. The difference is stark and the Democrats know this, and they are throwing this guy in the garbage. How many incidents like this have we covered just over the last two weeks? Well, honestly, it's not enough because here's another one. This is an issue on Joe Biden's mind. He is deeply frustrated by what he views as the sort of lack of respect from the, the press and from also from his fellow Democrats about about his intent to run for re-election. He can't figure out why folks won't take yes for an answer. You and I know why that is. It's because he's going to be 81 years old in 2024. He's already the oldest American president, and there's real doubts uh, about his capacity to serve a second four-year term. This is the main story in the press. Democrats seem desperate to find a replacement. CNN just put out this article right over here. The whispers of Hillary Clinton 2024 have started, and we're also getting reports that apparently President Joe Biden is annoyed by 2024 questions, reports the New York Times. And of course, my response to that is, you, Joe Biden, do not get to be annoyed. You don't have the right to be annoyed. Everybody else does. Joe Biden's annoyed by the 2024 questions, but I think the American people are more rightfully annoyed with this clown currently occupying the White House. And speaking of the American people being annoyed with this guy, President Joe Biden once again has hit another all-time low in his average job approval rating on RCP. Joe now sits at an even 38% on the dot, with an average negative spread of 19.5 points. Take a look at the chart, folks. The graph's starting to look like a diagram of magnetic field repulsion as these two ends go further and further apart. And what an absolutely stunning number. Now, many people are drawing comparisons to Donald Trump in 2018, who had very similar numbers from the fake news polls. But it's such a terrible example. First of all, Donald Trump at that point was still relatively unproven, and he had the entire media machine working 24-7, 365 days against him. Not to mention, Donald Trump came into office with low approval rating. Joe Biden came into office with nearly 60% approval, and he's now down basically 20 20 points with a 20 point disapproval spread. Folks, things are getting real bad for Joe. And when your numbers are this much into the gutter, it means that your own party is now working against you. Not only politicians, but voters as well. Right track, wrong track data is currently staggering. Take a look at the last three polls. Anywhere from 73 to 79% of the population believe that the country is headed in the wrong direction, with two of the polls showing 14 and 17% of people surveyed believing the US is headed in 
in the right direction. And so with numbers of disapproval that high and with numbers of people believing the country is headed in the wrong track, getting close to 80%, well, a good chunk of them have to be Democrats. And that's what the analysis is saying. Most say the nation is on the wrong track, including Democrats, AP Nork poll suggests. An overwhelming and growing majority of Americans say the U.S. is headed in the wrong direction, including nearly 8 in 10 Democrats, according to a new poll that finds deep pessimism about the economy plaguing President Joe Biden. Take a look at what some of these Democrat voters are saying. He's doing the best he can. I can't say he's doing a good job, said Chuck McClain, 74. But his opposition is so bad, I just don't feel the Democratic Congress is doing enough. My wife and I are very frustrated with where the country is headed, and we don't have a lot of hope for the political end of it to get any better. Now take a look at this one. Dorothy Vado, 66, said she voted for Biden in 2020 but plans to switch allegiance this year. I'm a Democrat so I had to vote Democrat, but that's going to change, said the Martin County, North Carolina resident. Douglas Gavilan, a 26-year-old in Miami, is concerned about the skyrocketing prices and rent that he sees in his community. Shelter costs are roughly a third of the U.S. consumer price index, so the run-up in rents and home values has started to strain the budgets even of many people living where there are good job opportunities. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to live here in a few years, Gavilan said. I definitely don't feel confident in the economy. Though he doesn't identify with a political party, Gavilan voted for Biden in 2020. He doesn't think Biden has proposed anything to make meaningful differences in his life, but he does think the president's in a tough spot. And so what we're seeing right now with Democrat voters is that they're not enthused, they're blackpilled, they don't like Joe Biden, and essentially they're losing faith in the Democrat party and political institutions. And probably the worst part for Democrats compiling piling on top of everything else, is this. There's a huge shift, and not only that, it's, it's one person at a time coming from the Democrat Party to the Republican Party. I'm speaking to my friends. They are shifting over right now. Um, we are going to continue to leave the Democratic Party. People are leaving the Democrat Party and joining Republicans at an astonishing rate. Nearly 1.7 million since the last election, and over a million just in the last 12 months. General left-wing voter sentiment can probably be summed up by what these two guys have to say. Here right now, what would you tell them? Tell them to get out of office, man. He's f***ed up. He's old. He's falling off of bikes and shit. It's over, man. Give it up. <laughs> I tell them, let Trump back in office. He did better for the black culture. Trump 2024. And so I think the Democrats here have put themselves in a very, very tough position. They've tried to change the conversation with their desperate tactics to make the election about Roe v. Wade or January 6. It's not working, and even if it has a little bit of an effect in the polling data, in the end, I think when we look at voter registration patterns, enthusiasm, and the shift in voter demographics, and probably one of the most important and one of the most telling factors, presidential approval rating, I think the Democrats are in a very very, very tough situation here between a rock and a hard place, some may say. And even the Democrat establishment knows that even though they'll never admit it, why else would they be trying to throw the most popular president in American history in the trash bin, never to look back at this failed experiment of putting a geriatric puppet in the White House, expecting for things to just go swimmingly? Well, Democrats, I only have one message for you. Congratulations, you played yourself. But of course, that's just my analysis. We'll have to see what happens in the upcoming elections. Thanks for watching, friends, and I'll see you on the next one.